forerunners for many of the local access channels. I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. Probably one of the biggest groundbreaking stations actually in the state. Television by the people for the people. Wasn't well, for you guys, you know, all those years, I would never, I wouldn't have a show, I will, I will admit that. know anything about PCTV. Today we're going to bring you inside the TV studio, a guided tour of your local community television station PCTV. In my first term as mayor, which the election was 1980, the term was from 1981 to 1984. In that first term, we aggressively sought uh, funding for a Piscataway cable station. And this was roughly at the same time that um, the cable carrier for this area was coming into the town to get permission to do cable in Piscataway and surrounding towns. So part of the bargaining that went on with the, the then carrier was that Piscataway would have a station. And the real source of the idea was my executive assistant then as mayor, her name was Barbara Weick. We filed a grant application with the federal government uh, for equipment and the studio was originally supposed to be in the uh, Piscataway High School and um, we, the grant was looking good and then uh, there was a new administration in Washington and they came in and took out all grants under the NTIA and um, we lobbied and lobbied and lobbied and finally we were one of three successful grantees in the United States that year. And uh, the grant was for $136,998. I will never forget it. Mm -hmm. And um, after we received the grant, the uh, school administration thought that they might not want it down there. And so the Piscataway government agreed to put it here. So with that money, the town purchased three cameras, some VCRs, um, a mobile unit um, that all the equipment was put in so that we could go out and tape sporting events and plays and then also we used um, the area in the municipal building was our studio and when we wanted to tape something in the studio we pulled out all the equipment set it all up set up the sets the props and when the taping was over it all came down and went back in the closet um, and that's how we started one of the problems dealing with the council chambers is when a producer had a show and they wanted to book a date we had to coordinate with the township clerk to see if the chambers were clear and a lot of times they weren't so we'd have to finagle the dates and get things done I guess money came available they were building the senior center and at that time it was decided that uh, we could build an actual real studio control room an actual PC TV location and uh, and that's where we are today it's uh, it's been a really big big change Maybe two years after I started here, we got this space, and um, it was just, it was just so fun, with this like brand new place, with like feeling like real, real offices, you know, a real studio, not just something we had to make every time we did something, um, but it was really fun. 
So some of the shows that I've worked on was, I guess, uh, all of them. Spotlight on Middlesex County. Rutgers uh, wrestling matches. Family Focus. And Jersey Fishing with my old friend Pete Semenik out of Manville. Health Talk. Aging Today in Middlesex County. I'm the Lucy's been running since 1992. I uh, started out as Leanne on the Loose. Leanne uh, was the host, very successful. She was very good with people. We it was kind of changed a little bit of the style of public access, I think. And then from then to today, we had a total of 40 different hosts. I've actually produced a whole bunch of other shows. Currently, uh, we're doing uh, Growing Green which is a show for the New Jersey Nursery and Landscaping Association, which is a big, big change for us. And the co-host, Lisa D, she's doing her own show now called Lisa D TV. My ex-husband and I, uh, may he rest in peace, we were like the first show on the station going back, and that was uh, quite the experience. So when we first started, we were submitting our, our, uh, our show because they weren't really producing yet. But then prime time, we actually started doing studio shoots, and it was amazing. We were at the uh, at town hall in the uh, in the meeting room, and that's where we used to tape. And it got a little dicey sometimes because we had some strange people come on the show, and here we were in town hall, and it was it was a hoot. It was really a good time, good memories. A friend of mine, Sal Bertolini, we started doing a show out of his beautiful, beautiful kitchen and he brought his wife on and his sister. So we've been taping there now for about six to eight months. So the show's developing. We have some new characters that are gonna be coming out in the future along with some new dishes. We did um, Court on Cable, which qu required us to go up to Warren to the courthouse, basically view the judge and all the uh, clientele that was associated with that court system. We would go to municipal court and we would set up the cameras before people came to court and then we just recorded court proceedings, municipal court. Sometimes we were there till one o'clock in the morning. You learned a lot about municipal court, like you learned yourself how to be able to navigate through the court system if you ever had a summons that you needed to appear in court for. Worked on the live mayor show, Eye on Piscataway. Well, the, the, the genesis of Eye on Piscataway uh, uh, for this show didn't happen until I became mayor, but, but the predecessor of that show uh, was really a live call-in show for the mayor at that time, which was uh, Mayor Ted Light. The show was a culmination. We normally have uh, one or two speakers um, on it. Uh, clips it uh, happened uh, uh, during that month or a couple of weeks prior to the airing of the show of events that go on. We used to do a yearly music video for um, the volunteers and the producers that would, the volunteer producers. For a while I had my own show uh, behind the scenes. Let's just talk to the volunteers because you get this impression that if you, ha if you want to be in television, well, you've got to go to college and you've got to study and take these courses and that course and some other course and like that. And you got to work your way up through the networks and like that. And I'm just saying, let's just show people that the volunteers here are average people. You're, 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 you're next door neighbors. You know? So we did the interviews and then we would do B-roll of the people like just on the set, doing whatever jobs they're describing and like stock footage of some of the shows they did. So it worked as not just you know, human interest, but also a bit of as a promo for us. Dialogue with Doris, I can't leave that out. That was, that was, that was a big one. The nervousness and the excitement, the lights, camera, action, never dreaming I'd ever be in that, that kind of environment. I like a dream come true. The one that stands out the most was the Dialogue with Doris when we did the African American women yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I don't want to say nightmare, but what I did to get it done seemed like a miracle. It won the hometown, won the CTN Cappy Award, and I thought, wow, if anything, that was, that was, the, that was the pinnacle of, of working here. I started uh, not just rock and roll back in 1985, at Channel 6 here in Piscataway before 
I came over to what I believe was Channel 12 at uh, the time. For the original pilot, I went out and wrestled the bear at Art Stock's Birchill Swim Club down in Old Bridge. We covered so many things with, with uh, our cameras over the years. I'm up to over 1,300 TV shows, and I just can't tell you how much fun we've had doing some of the things we've done. Everything from, of course, wrestling the bear, but uh, just going out and having fun and meeting all the people and all the musicians and comedians and artists. And this area has a lot to offer and so does this station so stay tuned <laughs> you'll see a lot of it here and on my show dick craig's not just rock and roll obviously the my most favorite one would be the one that i produced shot edited wrote and helped had a lot of volunteers on um which was kids corner and it was like for kids from maybe seven or so to 14 or so uh it started in 1990 it went 13 years to 2003. We started out with like just really a kids talk show. Kids would come on, we had, the set was like a, a bedroom set, like hanging out in somebody's bedroom and just hanging out and talking with each other. And then the other half of that would be talent portion. So I went to different uh, middle schools around the area and scouted talent. My daughter was one of the first cast members. Um, she had to produce a show, so I learned how to produce a show. I learned how to write scripts. Um, I did lots of things with the kids. We put on Christmas shows. I did Backwards Jeopardy about four or five times that my daughter invented. And then once a year we would do a vacation show, Kids Corner on Vacation, and we would do it outside the studio and we'd go to pl different places and that was a much more scripted show with you know, having a, a whole shot sequence of what we needed and things like that. And that was really like Stella Salvaggio was really instrumental in um, helping to write those shows and put them together and, and produce them and call the places. And Dawn taught me everything I know about working at a TV station. We got lots of kids involved with acting. Some of them today who actually are still acting. And I'd like to mention their names. One is Rachel, Ryan, Tara and Alana, those are the four people that I know have gone on to do um, movies, uh, something on YouTube, and I think they really enjoy doing the show. I started helping Herb Suds, and we used to do shows at the Colorado Cafe, dance shows twice a month. Uh, and then I started working with him going out on the road. I did a lot of Suds and Country because I like to dance, so I would go there and help out, and then I would dance. My show was basically country music, uh, bluegrass music. Um, we did that. We started out here with Piscataway in February of 87. I was doing a video show. And the show evolved into the third largest in the United States. Probably by 1989 or 90, I had the third largest country music video outlet in the United States, according to Billboard magazine. In January of 88, from video shows, I started doing Nashville interviews. The show was already recognized, and I was able to get all the interviews I needed. The first show was Bellamy Brothers down in Red Bank. Then it went on, I don't know how many Nashville interviews I did, I'd, from Garth Brooks to Willie Nelson to Rita McIntyre to Taylor Swift in 2007. When I do an interview, I'm prepared. I don't ask them what color dress are you wearing, what color suit, what color tie you have, how the flowers growing. I don't ask that question. I want to know. I'm a music show. I want to know about their music. We did a lot of work, and uh, we went a lot of places, too. Uh, sometimes there's some new show, which makes it really exciting because it's something new. But even when you're doing some other show, uh, for example, Law on the Line, um, okay, you have lawyers, you have a, maybe a judge that's going to talk. But you learn different things. And uh, so I, I find that very interesting to, uh, to learn uh, about new things. So it, it's fun. Um, we normally have about 60 active volunteers at any one time. But I would say since we've started um, over the nine years, we must have trained probably over 200 people mm -hmm. have gone through our video training class. So I started out as a production assistant, um, but I would 
do everything from camera operating, editing, producing, writing. Was there anything left? Have you enjoyed your time here at PCTV, and are you intending to stick around here for a while? Oh, yes, as long as they will have me. I plan on staying. Uh, I've seen many, many uh, people volunteer, and of course, as their schedules would get busy, then of course, uh, they would depart. So, um, and we've had some really good camera people. We had some really good good times. We have had such such a, a wonderful group of people here. We really have. You know, we're, we are very we have been blessed. They spent a lot of hours uh, away from home. So my wife, of course, would always wonder, what in the world is it that you're doing at that TV station? What's going on over there? So I finally got tired of answering the question all the time, and I said, listen. Why don't you just come and volunteer at the station? Then you'll see exactly what it is that I do. So I said, okay. So I, I became a volunteer, and I actually liked it, and I was very happy that I joined. So it was really a great experience. So uh, she really definitely got involved, and that kind of got her uh, <laughs> off my back, so to speak, about what the heck it is that I do over here all, for all those hours. The late Jim Bullard uh, told me about this particular studio, and so I came over one day and uh, got signed up to do the camera work. First heard of it through on the television uh, by taking a look at the TV, and they were advertising for people to, mm -hmm. to uh, work. The experience has been extremely good. I met a lot of people, developed a lot of networks with folks working the different shows, such as uh, Night Court, and uh, sports and uh, other, other types of shows. Mm -hmm. Of course, I remember Jim Bullard, who was our council member, and he was also a volunteer, and he also taught some of the classes. I worked with him a lot on different shows. Um, I really miss him a lot. The late councilman Jim Bullard, he's one of our, as we call it, and he used to go around saying, um, were the A-team. The A-team was the dedicated volunteers who showed up on all my shoots, ready to go, bang, bang. I found out about a volunteer opportunity, and I, at the time it was, uh, the, the studio was at the municipal building in the council chambers where it all had to be set up. So when not a TV studio, it was the council chambers. So I walked in, Don Dionisio was there, and I said, I'm looking for the TV studio, and she said, you're in it. Now, I was short of cash, and my mom and dad loaned me the 25 bucks, a princely sum, for the training class. And my dad, for the rest of his life, and my mom, to this day, say it was among the best money they ever spent. One thing that I liked about Piscataway TV was I was able to do things almost immediately with very little, very little trouble. They just basically said, hey, Ken, you want to direct? I said, okay. Yeah. You know, that was, that was one of the things I really liked about being here and why I did never, I never said to myself, you know, well, maybe I should go into New York and try for one of the big stations or the networks or something because you go there, there would have been massive hierarchy problems and a lot of paperwork and a whole bunch of stuff. Whereas here, it's just a case of, hey, you want to do this? Okay, yeah. My name is Daniel McGovern. Yes, I was a television junkie from mm -hmm. birth, and uh, mm -hmm. just eventually, naturally, I became interested in how they make television and how they uh -huh. produce shows. And yeah. Well, I can tell you this. Working with Herb, I've met just about every major Nashville star that was out there, is out there. Um, you could not get that exposure or experience if you were, let's say, working at one of the networks because you would wind up being one of the grunts and the only ones who would deal with the talent would be the TV talent and, and their producers and stuff like that and you would be like shuffled off to coffee and donuts. I, I was very blessed the day I walked in the door and found Debbie. Um, I did learn a lot from Debbie, too. I used to come in and talk to her. Uh, every time I got a chance, she would keep me informed on everything that was happening at the studio. She was really helpful, really nice. This was basically her her child. She she grew up with it. 
uh, the reins were given to her but by uh, the former mayor Ted Light uh, to nurture uh, the TV station uh, before she retired. Uh, she really blossomed into uh, a makeshift studio over at the council chambers into an actual real studio uh, next to the Senior Citizen Center. And it became more encompassing un under Debbie's watch where the, the pro type of programming really expanded. Uh, instead of uh, focusing solely on government uh, issues that was expanded into lifestyles, uh, you name it, uh, where you would see on most mainstream um, television stations out there, all on a shoe shoestring budget. Debbie was one of the best bosses I ever had. She was my big sister. She was my mentor. She is missed. She really is. Right, we have Debbie Gist, who is the station manager for PCTC, and Debbie's been involved with PCTC since its inception in 1984. Debbie has a BA degree in journalism and a communications degree from Rutgers University. And she has previously worked uh, for New Jersey Network and also for Cross Country Cable. We're happy to have you as our station manager here at PCTC. Thank You're you. doing an excellent job. Thanks, Thanks for being with us tonight. But without Debbie, I couldn't have got Leon Peter. She let them go. Whenever I had to do an interview in Sellersville, Pennsylvania, Valley Forge or Waterloo or wherever it was, in Union, uh, Rawway, I did a couple interviews. I forget where I did all the interviews. Red Bank, Mount Count Basie. Without Debbie allowing me to take these guys when I needed them, I would have no show either. I have no interviews. But she was very good to me, and she owed the camp. The equipment was always available. And uh, so Debbie was unbelievable. She was the person behind increasing the functions that PCTC does making our community more informed, and she was just a terrific person. She was an amazing person. I miss her. Yes, I worked with Andrea too. We did a, um, a newsletter. It was called Wrap Up, and what we would do is interview uh, the host of the shows. We got some of the kids from Kids Corner to, to write stories. I wrote a couple of stories. Um, some of the mothers of the kids wrote stories, some of the interns wrote stories, and we were able to come up with six issues. We were trying to do like three or four a year, but it didn't work out that way, so we only ended up with six in total. But it was, it was very interesting and, and very nice to do. If you ask me if I had anything to do over again, would I do, would I do anything differently? And I wouldn't. I would not intern in New York City at a big television station. I learned so much here. Um, if I had interned in New York at some, you know, NBC or something where a lot of my friends interned, I would have learned how to make coffee. Here I learned everything that I needed to learn. Well, I hope that we will always be able to get uh, volunteers and uh, even if they do end up not staying very long, it's an invaluable experience and of course uh, you can get pretty creative. It's been really um, a family type of thing here. Um, everybody kind of got to know each other. We worked on the same shows, uh, when we did parades, when we did, uh, you know, other things on outside. It was, uh, it was definitely a lot of fun. Um, so we kind of, everybody kind of enjoyed, uh, the entire, uh, time, uh, here at the, at the TV station. Yeah. All in all, have you been satisfied with your relationship with here at PCTC? Extremely satisfied with the people, with the, the, the networking of folks that I've met, the people I've worked with. Extremely satisfied. Okay. We wouldn't have been able to do it without the volunteers. You know, we had people who were working behind the scenes, people who were working in front of the scenes, people who were producing, editing. Um, and I just think it was a marvelous community to be a part of when I was a part of it. It's really, um, it's really an enjoyable uh, something that's really been worthwhile volunteering for, uh, for all these years. Never got tired of it. It's amazing. I, usually I get tired of things, but this is one thing that I never really got tired of. So it was really a lot of fun, and it still is. I feel like I walked into the future already just coming in here today. Always changing industry. Every other day, something new comes out and say, are we on top of it? Are we on top of it? You know, what are the other guys doing? You know, how, we, how do we look compared to them? They're just getting better all the time. PCTV is getting better. Just look, look around here. I came in here, there was, we were in the municipal building when I started, at one room. You know, and all the equipment was in there. Now take a look at the studio here. 
you know, it just amazes me to come in here and see how far you guys have advanced and how up to date you are with all the equipment and all the stuff. You guys have nothing, you have nowhere to go but up. When, when, when people talk about public access, you know, they always think of Wayne's World or something like that. It's like, yeah, a little bit, some of that happened, but it's, 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 this is a real TV station. This is, a, this is a TV station and we are competing with the big boys for all the eyeballs out there watching. So it, it, we're, we're in it, we're in the mix. Toughest challenge that uh, PC TV is going to have, um, and also other municipal public access channels, is cord cutting. That's where, I guess, for lack of a better word, streaming services uh, offering like that is going to be part of the uh, the new uh, 22nd century of telecommunications, so to speak. We we want to try to eliminate uh, as much cord cutting because they are a primary. Um, platform for information out there in public emergencies. So, uh, so I think that's going to be one of the biggest challenges uh, public access channels in general across the country are going to have moving forward. Uh, onward and upward for PCTV in the future. I only see the best for what's going on here. Uh, every time I stop in, I see improvements in the equipment and uh, more and more volunteers. For anyone out there, any age, if you're interested in TV production, be a volunteer. Come on over. The guys and girls will be happy to have you here and put you on a camera or put a headset on you and get you involved. And that's one of the best things about local stations and this station in particular. You're all great people. I love working with you. Um, this, this station... You know, you've lost some good people that were here that, that initially started the station. So they built a nice product and you guys are developing it. I think we're gonna be one of their premier access stations in the state. So that's why I'm very happy to be part of the PCTC family. There's a lot of good shows that uh, um, people may or may not know about that it kind of provides information out there uh, to the public. Uh, and especially to, you know, the citizens in, uh, in Piscataway. You know, I think Piscataway Access Television is an amazing thing for communities to have, and I just hope that it continues exactly as, as it has been for, you know, this many years, just to keep track of uh, community events and making everybody in a very small community, which, you know, Piscataway is not a small community, but when we think of the world it is, um, being able to have access to everything that's happening in the community, which is the beautiful part of it. PCTC has blossomed. You know, it's it's a great organ of communication for uh, Piscataway citizens and others. But uh, what I'll tell you, it's more important now than ever. And I've seen so much history that just vanishes because people just didn't think to preserve it, but we've done that as best we can. You know, we have, we have, a, we have an important role in this community and the others have a important role in their respective communities and like I said we ain't going no place.
We'll fix it in post.